Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. I'm very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. And welcome to Gina Ch 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 Tuesday's edition of the DCEU Daily. And today, Jay Oliver, that wonderful man, that wonderful Snyder fan, that wonderful, talented man who's directed so many wonderful DC animated movies, who's worked with um, Zack Snyder on several DCEU movies, uh, including his edition, his version of Justice League, has been sitting down more Snyder haters. This time, it's someone called Insane Ian. Should we take a look at what happened here? So here's Insane Ian, who thought he'd come in. Of course, he hasn't got a picture of himself. He's a coward. So this is what he said. Watching release the Snyder Cut fanboys lose their shit when I tell them no such thing exists as they flood the comments of a Watchmen tweet by WB has brought me a singular joy tonight. I think it gave him a boner, which means it made his little thing a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think the girls laugh at his little thing, don't they? Anyway, Snyder, so he carries on, right? So he carries on, right? Snyder was let go before filming was complete. And there's no way they'll release a new cut of a barn. So um, unfortunately for him, Jay Oliver has actually found him because he made the mistake of actually hashtagging it. He hashtagged it weird, weirdly, but Jay Oliver found him. And this is what Jay Oliver had to say. Hi, Ian. Unfortunately, I've got to let you, 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 you know that you are pretty dead wrong about your statements. One, the car exists. Two, Zach was on the movie months after Principal Rat. I was there on set for the very last shot, and as far as I could tell, Zach was still directing. Jay goes on. I know that Zach was still the director because right after the last shot, I met with him to go over reshoots for Wonder Woman. Now that's kind of interesting. Um, now all films get reshoots. Um, we didn't really know much about any uh, Wonder Woman reshoots at the time. So that's pretty interesting. But he goes on. Sorry to break it to you, Ian. But your joy was based on ignorance. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Next time I'd suggest knowing your subject more before you make fun of a group of people who want something that you clearly are not a fan of. You are just setting yourself up to look dumb. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. We are not worthy of you, Jay. Absolutely fantastic. How many of these freaking trolls has Jay sat down? And he does it so well, he does it so politely, but he has the knowledge and he has the intellect, intellect right? He, he, he just, he, he's just so amazing. We have gone beyond the stage of it existing or not. We know it exists. So many people have told us, including the man who bloody directed the film. But it's always great to have Jay Oliver back on Twitter. Um, he hasn't been around for a while, actually. I haven't seen very much from him. Or maybe I just haven't noticed his tweets. But that's absolutely brilliant. Of course, this guy was a troll. He knows it exists. But this is what they do. They find subject matter. The, this is the problem. He's not passionate either way. Right, this guy. It's just a troll. Just trying, It's all about attention, right? They don't get attention in their real world, probably because they've got a small one. And so they try and make themselves look big. Now, basically, that response wouldn't have upset him. That response would have made him happy. A Hollywood creative has just responded to him. But sometimes it's good. That kind of thing is, is great for the movement. So now we move on. And I think it's time we realign what the Snyder Cut is. I believe we must constructively join up, release the Snyder Cut and release the Air Cut. I think they should be one thing. I think they should be one movement. And they absolutely shouldn't be separate movements. And we shouldn't just forget about it a few days after we forget about David Ayer's um, Instagram post. I think it's really, really important now for David Ayer and for Zack Snyder. Listen, Zack Snyder was creating something so unique with the DCEU. Now, although it wasn't to everyone's taste, I do believe eventually when, let's call it his phase one was over, I think more and more people would have appreciated it. Because here's the thing, Man of Steel isn't a bad film. 
no matter what they said. Um, Batman v Superman isn't a bad movie, and Suicide Squad, the theatrical cut, isn't that bad. But just imagine what kind of film we would have got if Sujihara didn't mess with the final product. Something even better. Wonder Woman was Patty Jenkins' vision, but it's very interesting to hear Jay talk about reshoots. It seems to me that Zack Snyder was on set of Wonder Woman quite a lot. Um, there would be reasons for that. He wasn't interfering with Patty's vision, obviously being a visionary director himself. He wouldn't do that. I think she needed a lot of help on the set, not because she's not any good or she isn't a good director. She definitely needed some advice on the action sequences. She did want a lot of that stuff to tie in to the DCEU. And I, I just think at that time we did have connectivity, didn't we? This is the thing that we've lost now. As much as I applaud Walter Hamada, because of what happened to Justice League, Warner Brothers decided that the interconnectivity was the thing that hurt Justice League. I don't agree with that. And it's like they're not making a Superman movie. It's like they're blaming Superman for, for the failure of Justice League. It's ridiculous. We really need a Superman movie. He's your biggest IP. He's your biggest character. What are you doing? You absolute fools. And as I say, the interconnectivity that Zack was doing, when you see how, you know, Batman v Superman literally showed us what happened last time, you know, in, in the Battle of Metropolis between Zod and Superman through Batman's point of view, through Bruce Wayne's point of view. That was beautiful. And then in Suicide Squad, the openings, well, the, the kind of, uh, after they introduced the characters, you, you've got that brilliant kind of statement by Waller, you know, Superman, uh, Superman changed the world when he flew across the sky. He changed the world again when he didn't. Absolute co connectivity. Superman's death is a consequence of Waller bringing the Suicide Squad together. Again, three films that have got interconnectivity, then boom, because of the reaction from Suicide Squad, because of the reaction to Batman v Superman, all we've got in co connectivity for Wonder Woman is a Bruce Wayne van, right? A lorry with the name Wayne on it, Wayne, Wayne Industries or whatever, right? That's all we got. And she was talking to Bruce via a computer. But I've heard that Batman and Bruce Wayne are actually in Wonder Woman, yep. Yeah? And I probably why they had reshoots and they cut Batman out and there was a lot of talk about Superman in those scenes and they cut it out. I think that was stupid. Interconnectivity is very important when you're creating a franchise. One of the reasons the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been so big for Disney and Marvel Studios is the interconnectivity. Fans love it. Now, DCEU Snyder fans agree that we don't want a jokey sitcom MCU franchise, but interconnectivity is very important. And what's going on now with the DC world of films, one of the things I don't like, and I love everything else, it's all, it, they're, they're kind of singular films, and that's great. And I love what Walter Hamada's doing. I love the Joker. Um, I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy the Batman. But they're all in separate universes. I do hope we do a crisis on infinite Earths. I hope that's what they're attempting to do, because that would be amazing. I don't think what they're doing is a bad thing. But I just think interconnectivity, a shared universe, a real shared universe, brings more butts in seats. It's the reason, it's the very reason the MCU works. Because from the very beginning, you could see they were creating a shared universe. You know, a universe which where one character will be in the other character's film. Well, you know, we saw the post credit scene with Fury meeting um, Robert Downey Jr. Stark for the first time. Then in The Incredible Hulk, we see, you know, a brilliant post credit scene, right? Um, with Tony Stark saying, we're building a team. Brilliant. So the interconnectivity was there from the very beginning. Now, Kevin Feige is quite humble about it when saying, well, the post credit scene started by accident. They were meant to, uh, uh, as a joke, joke or not, post credit scenes work, interconnectivity works. And that's exactly what Zack Snyder was creating. You know, that wonderful scene at the end of Suicide Squad, the post credit scene with Bruce Wayne and Waller. Maybe you should stop working nights or whatever she says. And that's taken straight out of the comics, by the way. Brilliant. And then from Wonder Woman onwards, we lost her. And Justice League was a bomb. So they, getting rid of Zack Snyder actually got rid of something really good from the DCEU. 
interconnectivity. And I think when we think about that, it's very sad that we lost that. Now, a lot of us fantasize still that maybe Zach can come back and continue what he was doing. Unfortunately, I just can't see that. The plans are in place now. Not unless you, the only, look, the only way they can do this, because really, if you think about it, there's only been two DCEU films, or three if you count the, the Abomination that's Justice League, since Zach was fired, and he was fired. So I suppose the dream's still alive, because they can do their Batman universe, they can do their, you know, DC uh, Black Label universe, but really in a way, Zach could slip back into the DCEU and still do his thing. Think about it. It could still work. Could Zack Snyder still return and do carry on his plan for the DCEU itself? Well, actually, he can. The Flash is in development. The Harley, you know, um, the Birds of Prey film is inconsequential. They can do their thing at the end of the day. And there's not much kind of connectivity in that film, but it doesn't matter. Nothing's going to be really... If, if you look, if you look at Aquaman and you look at um, Shazam, Shazam had more kind of Easter eggs from the Snyder universe uh, than any other film. They kept on mentioning, Bat mentioning Batman and Superman. So in fact, if you think about it, yes, we only had one mention of Steppenwolf in Aquaman, but they didn't kind of try and delete the, anything that Zack's done before. And if you think about it, with Shazam showing so much of um, Snyder's Batman and Superman, no, they, they didn't purposely go out there to rewrite what Zack did. So in fact, Zack could come back, run the DCEU, and that doesn't stop them doing whatever they want with the Batman universe with Matt Reeves and the Dark Label with Todd Phillips. So I think I'll go back on what I said. It's not too late. There is a chance. This is what happens when you do improvised videos and, it, and you're not scripted. You speak um, without thinking. And, you know, I've always kind of thought, well, is it too late for Zack Snyder to come back? And I've always thought maybe it is. But thinking about it, everyone, I think there's still an opportunity here because if they do release the air cut and the Snyder cut and they do well, there's no reason why Zack Snyder can't pick up where he left off. You can continue this conversation with me over on Twitter, at Movies TV Mad. Please comment down below. I want to know what you think. Please like and subscribe and especially share. And I shall see you tomorrow for more DCEU Daily.